So I've created this step-by-step -step cleaning instruction card, and there's a link in the description to download this card as a PDF. So go grab that and share it with anyone you want. Let's take a look at it. Safety first. You'll of course want gloves and glasses. Removing parts and cleaning them is the most likely time for you to get resin somewhere you don't want it to be, like on your hands or in your eyes. It's common sense, wear protection. Here's some items you'll want on hand. As a cleaning solution, my favorite is actually denatured alcohol, but you can also use a high percentage isopropyl alcohol. You'll also need a container for the alcohol large enough to submerge the 3D printed part at least halfway. And for best results, you're gonna want a second container with very clean alcohol. The first one, we'll call that dirty alcohol, is where you do all the cleaning. The second one is clean alcohol just for a dip or rinse. You're gonna want a roll of paper towels, a soft bristle toothbrush, and strips of terry cloth towels. For cleaning hard to reach areas, you might want something like a Q-tip or a small pipe cleaner brush. Environment. Don't do your part cleaning in a room that has UV light spilling in. Either install blackout shades or clean your part at night. First, I remove the part from the build plate. If the part is printed right on the plate with no supports and is stuck, you can stick it in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes and the part will pop right off. Otherwise, if the part is suspended with supports, you can hit it with the scraper and get it off there. Next, I soak it in alcohol for just a few minutes. Just let the alcohol do its job and loosen up and dilute the leftover resin. Flip it over to make sure all surfaces have a good soak. If the part has supports, remove them now. Just be careful not to scratch the part when removing supports. And also be aware this is where you might poke a hole in your glove. I did it while making this video. I use a soft toothbrush to scrub the part with alcohol. Just dip the brush in the alcohol and get in those corners. Then I also use a strip of terry cloth towel to scrub and rinse the part. Again, get the towel wet with alcohol and scrub it. In my experience, the terry cloth doesn't scratch the part and the little terry cloth loops do a good job of cleaning the detailed areas. For hard to reach areas, you can use a Q-tip or a pipe cleaner. Holes in concave areas can trap leftover resin. Then I use a gloved finger to rub on the surface to see if there's any film left. Sometimes there'll be a slight film on the parts that will rub off. So if rubbing produces some grit, dip in alcohol and clean some more. Then inspect by eye and look for any areas that aren't clean yet. Obviously, if it's still dirty, keep cleaning. Repeat the scrubbing until clean. When the part is clean, it should be squeaky clean. Inspect it again and it should be ready for a final rinse. When the part is ready, rinse with pure clean alcohol or dip in a tub of clean alcohol. This tub shouldn't get very dirty even after lots of uses because the part should be really clean before it goes in here. Then let it air dry. When the alcohol evaporates, the part should have a matte finish. Just give it one last look over to make sure it's really clean and that you didn't miss any spots. Then the part is ready to post cure. I post cure slowly with a handheld UV spotlight. But I still want to give you a few more tips and go a little deeper into a couple of the points. But first, have you subscribed yet? If not, do that now and hit the bell icon. I have some other cool videos coming out and you don't want to miss out on anything. Also, if you have any great tips on how you clean 3D printed parts, share them. Write what you know in a comment below. That rhymes. Finally, before I go over the cleaning tips, I want to thank the sponsors for this video. iForm 181 is a very affordable resin from Yusu. You can get it on Amazon for around $15 a bottle. All of the parts shown in this video and the previous video were printed with iForm 181. I've been using it for about a month and it's been working out really well. This video is also sponsored by Elgu. I've got the Elgu Mars Pro here and I've been using it for a few weeks. I've had it set up in my office and I work in here every day and the fumes haven't bothered me at all. This lid makes a good seal. This is just a great printer to get started with. It's only $240 on Amazon right now. Or if you want the mono version, the Mars Pro 2, that one is only $299. This video is also sponsored by Thangs. 
I know some of the 3D model collection sites out there have been a bit lacking, but Thangs is the solution you've been looking for. Thangs is a platform for independent engineers, designers, 3D CAD and 3D printing hobbyists. Find new Thangs with ease with over 1.6 million models and growing. Thangs even has a geometric search engine. I'm not even sure how it can do this, but you can find 3D models by uploading a partially completed model, and it will find models similar to yours that you can download and use in your project. Whether you're looking to find a model or share a model, Thangs is the new place to go for that. So click the link in the description below and start exploring today. Links for all this stuff is in the description. When you use one of those links to buy something, it helps me a lot and it helps me keep making videos. But enough of that, now on with the tips. I learned this one the hard way back when I was doing the dog tags. I had a whole batch of 40 some tags that I printed in my garage and then brought them into my kitchen to clean up and they all turned out shiny. So don't let your parts get hit with any UV light until that final step where you've inspected them to see that they're ready for post cure. Natural UV light spill from sunlight coming in a window is probably the top culprit for parts not getting clean enough. I've tried cleaning with toothbrushes, sponge pads, and terry cloth towels. But the thing I found that works the best is strips of terry cloth towel. The strips are a lot easier to manage than a full towel. You can get cheap terry cloth towels from Costco or from Amazon, and I just take one of these and cut it into strips. Soak a strip in alcohol and then use it to scrub your parts. Last year, because of COVID, isopropyl alcohol was in short supply. We tried Mean Green, Simple Green, and other cleaning solutions, but the best substitute for IPA was denatured alcohol. It comes in this scary looking container that says fuel in big letters, but now I use it exclusively. It doesn't have that same toxic smell that IPA has. It does a really good job of dissolving the resin, and it air dries really well with no streaks. I've discovered that oftentimes a part will have a slight film on it. I suspect this might happen more often when you use anti-aliasing, but that's a subject for a different video. I touched on this in my steps, but I test for this by just rubbing my gloved thumb over the part. Sometimes there's a little film on there that rubs off and it sort of produces some grit. If you find this, get out the terry cloth strip, soak it in alcohol, and clean it again. When the part is clean, it might even squeak when you rub it. Now I know if you're trying to clean something really ornate, you can't exactly do this, but still be aware that the film can be there and it will make your part look dirty or even stay a little sticky after post curing. So clean it really well. Ever eat at a restaurant and the table is dirty and then they bring over this nasty rag and wipe it down and all the time you're thinking, really you're just smearing the dirt all over the table. So now the entire table is actually dirtier than when we sat down. So this is essentially what happens when your tub of alcohol gets dirty. And if you look at my tub, well, there are some resin stains on here that aren't coming off. So when you clean your parts with alcohol, the alcohol does get murky. All those drips of uncured resin float away and dissolve in the alcohol, and it gets tinted and dirty. The tub gets dirty. And if you're like I am and switch colors a lot, well, you end up with all those different colors in the tub as well. So this tip is that occasionally you need to swap out your alcohol. Dirty alcohol can actually make your parts more dirty. You can get clumps of resin deposited on there that are from several prints ago. So every now and then, you just need to clean out your tub as good as you can and put some fresh alcohol in there. And I've covered it before, but you can recycle the dirty alcohol. But I don't usually clean parts with recycled alcohol. I use that for cleaning out the vat and things like that. And of course, don't forget that step I showed of dipping in some pure, fresh, clean alcohol. Do that final rinse with really clean alcohol. Your tub of clean alcohol should stay clean for a long time. If dipping a part in there makes your clean alcohol dirty, the part wasn't very clean before you did that step. I actually don't have a clean tub right now, so I just poured a little fresh alcohol over the top of the part to rinse it off. The last tip is to be patient. Here's the thing, you don't have to rush into post curing. You can do that tomorrow or next week. Until you post cure, there's still time to clean the part better, remove any leftover resin or scaly stuff. But after you post cure, you can't. So clean it, dip it, rinse it with fresh alcohol, and then inspect it really well before exposing to any UV light. If it doesn't look clean before post curing, 
it won't look clean after. So that's it, that's how I clean parts. And like I said before, if you have a different method or if you have some tips, please share them. If you don't have a 3D printer yet or are just getting started, please check out my video on getting into resin 3D printing. Thanks for watching.